Welcome to Life from Lockdown Library, presented by Bookworm Goa, with your hosts Nayan and Anandita. This is a series of conversations with book and library people where they share their responses to the ongoing global crisis. We're talking social distancing from a community perspective. We're talking access to books and storytelling, but in quarantine. The hope here is to find ways together to reimagine the library, to think of it as a vital, evolving, transcendent space that can both hold and give voice to this moment of intense uncertainty. Presenting live from Lockdown Library. Hi, I'm Anandita, a library educator with Bookworm. And today I'm speaking with Galson. Galson is associated with the Tibet Fund and Manjushri Educational Services, non-profit educational NGOs based in Dharamshala, with an aim to improve the quality of education in the exiled Tibetan and Himalayan communities in India and Nepal. Good evening, Galson, and thank you so much for talking with us today. Good evening, Anandita, and thank you for having me. Uh, so, Galson, we wanted to begin with the current COVID-triggered lockdown situation where many of us are confined to our homes and to the internet. And since this lockdown has started, we have been witnessing a lot of story-related content being posted online in the form of stories, texts, readings, author talks, podcasts, and so much more. What are your thoughts on this sudden explosion of online related content in the field of library work? In, in general, I think it's a very positive sign that, you know, librarians and teachers are, you know, stepping out of their comfort zone and uh, trying to explore the possibility of uh, effectively using technology uh, and social media platforms to transact their lessons, uh, you know, in our case, you know, uh, do these reading, reading related activities with children. So I think the biggest problem for me is the lack of interaction between, in our case, the librarians and uh, children when we, uh, you know, use mm. technology, uh, do our library activities. Uh, that is the biggest problem mm. because, uh, because uh, based on what I've seen so far in our context is that these online programs and activities are designed and presented in a way that leaves no scope for children to to ask questions, to participate, you know, uh, actively uh, in the in the program. So that is a big, uh, big problem for me uh, when it comes to uh, the quality of teaching and learning. Thank you, Galson. That was um, interesting to hear. So, uh, Galson, at the same time, um, as all these online stories are being posted online and um, so much online work is being done, we have also been witnessing many of our library partners, field organizations, and other literacy groups engaging with relief work during this time. What do you think about this in light of a vision for libraries? Sure, I think uh, that's very, very important. Uh, uh, I really don't know much about uh, uh, in your uh, context, but then uh, I can uh, speak about uh, the things that there are done in our community. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, in supporting the poor uh, in our community. So there, 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 like, there are a lot of organizations like uh, monasteries, uh, educational institutions, and you know, even the central Tibetan administration uh, stepping up to you know, uh, you know, support people who are really in need of uh, who, who who don't really have the basic necessities yeah. met. That is, the, I'm sure that should be the first priority, uh, you know, and uh, everything else is second, including, you know, a library and so that I think is, is uh, should be the priority and it's, it's good that we are doing that. Hmm. So yes, this is a difficult um, and complicated time in so many ways and it is asking us to examine our own vision, um, an area of work whom we want to work with, why how, and so many more questions. Do you agree, and how does this apply to us in the library space? What this COVID outbreak situation uh, made me uh, think is how we could expand our work, how uh, we should not confine mm -hmm. our work within the four walls of uh, our libraries. So this, mm -hmm. I think, is a biggest, uh, you know, a question that came to my mind and uh, a kind of a realization that I had, uh, you know, when I'm going through this situation right now, that 
uh, we need to expand our sphere, sphere of influence uh, uh, in terms of reaching out, edu- educating uh, people about uh, the work that we are doing and the importance of reading. So, for example, like if we educate our parents about the importance of reading and it is still in, in them the spirit of uh, librarian and uh, encur- encourage them to have a space in, in their home which they can call, you know, a small library, a mini library for the children. So if these things have been done, uh, then the situation would, uh, the, the outbreak, the COVID outbreak situation, uh, you know, would still impact the way, uh, you know, things function. But then a librarian and, you know, to yes. you know, uh, have more spaces like library in homes, in schools, in classrooms, everywhere. I think that would be the way to go forward. Yes. Uh, Galson, during this um, this time, which is a time of so much confusion and isolation, what has given you strength and purpose? So I think uh, for me, uh, instead of working from office, I'm working from home. And uh, I'm busy with my work most of the time. But uh, of course, like there's less uh, human-to-human interaction uh, and uh, there's more time that you spend with yourself. So to make up for that, I try to, you know, uh, do, try to organize meetings uh, with uh, my office mates as well as my uh, fellow, like, educators. Uh, sometimes we discuss work. Sometimes we discuss, uh, you know, uh, uh, educational topics which uh, are of common interest uh, to all. So uh, that keeps us, you know, uh, uh, less uh, stressed and uh, and and also like mm. I do a lot of uh, reading online. Unlike uh, the time before uh, the COVID I- uh, outbreak, where I read more uh, books, but then the access to e resources uh, is something that I explored and I find it uh, quite useful. Like there are a lot of things which I ha- I would not have uh, explored, mm. uh, would yeah. not have known about. Uh, uh, had the situation was normal, you know. So in that sense, mm. uh, online resources, I kind of realized that, you know, it's very, very uh, rich and uh, and most, a lot of these open uh, education resources are very, very useful. Uh, so I would strongly suggest uh, uh, library, library educators as well as teachers to explore as many of them as possible. Yes. Um, thank you for sharing all these um, lovely ways in which you have been engaging during this time. Lastly, could you uh, share any thought or message with our listeners, many of whom we trust are library workers? Mm-hmm. Yes, I think so. You know, we have uh, realized that you know the use of technology is in- inevitable. So mm. it's very very important for librarians to uh, learn how to use technology to. Uh, you know, reach out to more audience, uh, you know, uh, and uh, also see how, like, they can incorporate uh, technology in the in the in the libraries. You know, how they can make their uh, work uh, more efficient by using technology. So that is uh, something that all the librarians, I think, must strive for. And uh, I mean, ebooks. Is something that I found quite interesting. For a very long time, I've always believed that you know uh, the reading ebooks is. Uh, I haven't liked it as much as I, re- I like reading books, right? So, uh, yes. but then um, of late, I've been reading a lot of ebooks, and I realized that you know uh, it's it's just a matter of getting used to and getting comfortable with. And once you read several books, then you feel that, okay, this, uh, you can, you can enjoy it as much as uh, you, you read, you know, regular uh, paper books. So uh, how can we uh, increase the access of ebooks? How can we incorporate ebooks in our library is another thing that uh, all of us have to think about. So yeah, these are basically what I, I have uh, in my mind for other libraries. Thank you so much. It has been really nice to hear your thoughts on this. Thank you for this pertinent uh, message, especially during this time. Thank you, Galson, for being a part of this.
and for sharing your thoughts and experiences with us. It was really an honor to talk with you today. This has been an episode of Life from Lockdown Library. Thank you so much for listening and we'll catch you next week.